Today I'll be working on replacing the front brake pads on this 2012 Toyota Corolla. Um, I've previously cracked the nut lug nuts loose while the car was on the ground and I've jacked it up and supported it on a jack stand and so now I'm just going to continue with the process of removing the wheel. Now that I've got the rim and tire off and out of the way, I uh, turn the steering wheel so that the caliper is facing out and everything is a little bit more accessible. Next, I'm going to use a 14 millimeter uh, ratchet wrench to remove the bolts that hold on the caliper. There's one on the top here and one on the bottom. And I'll just loosen those first, like that. And now I should be able to spin these out by hand. There's the top caliper bolt, and there's the bottom caliper bolt there. They're both the same. And now the caliper should just slide out of the way here, and I'm just going to set this up here for now, making sure I don't overextend the, the brake hose here or anything like that. Keep it nice and supported up here so the brake hose doesn't get pinched. Next, I'm just going to pull the brake pads out of the way, and you can see the shims are starting to kind of come off a little bit, but they just slide out of these clips and out of the way. There's the outer pad. Take a look at it there. It's somewhat worn. It's not completely down to the, uh, to the bare minimum, but it's getting time. And then the, the inner pad comes out the same way. It's just a little harder to see. Sometimes just prying this with a little screwdriver can help. Okay, and there's the inner pad. And this one's worn a little bit more than the other one. This is closer to uh, needing to be changed. So the next thing I'll do is remove these old pad clips. And the easiest thing to do is to use a small screwdriver and go in on the outer side of the caliper bracket between the bracket and the um, clip. And kind of work it in and then roll it out like that. And of course the spring tension on it will kind of make it fly. So you may want to be careful. And then I'll do the inner ones the same way. If I can get in there. There's the bottom one. the top one. Okay, so those four clips are out of the way and set aside. The replacement pads that I chose are Adaptive One hybrid ceramic disc pads from Napa. Uh, these are their sort of top of the line pads, I guess you could say. Uh, they probably have some that are a little better than this, but those are more high performance. Um, here's, you can see the those are the old pads from the old side, or the other side, and uh, here are the new pads. So this one here is marked outer, that's the outer pad of course, and this one is the inner pad. Okay, so here are the pads, the new pads with the old pads, and you can see the new pads are quite a bit thicker of course, uh, but they're also marked outer and inner and they have the built-in shim just like the stock pads here did. Um, in the kit is also included some new uh, caliper clip springs and some new um, wear indicators. I guess that's what these would, these clips would be called. So these I need to put on the new pads and what I'm going to do is just match those up uh, the same way that the clips are on the old pads. So this is the outer pad. So on this one the clip will go on the right side just like the old pad. 
and on the inner pad it'll go on the left just like the old one now these wear clips they just clip on to the pads like this there's a little tab I'm not sure if it's visible in the camera there there's a little tab in the spring that locks into a depression in the back of the pad so they don't fall out and you just clip on something like this just work them on and then that should be good good then I'll put this clip on the inner pad just like that the next thing that I want to do is check the caliper slide pins and put a little grease on those and you can see these these look like they're moving this well this one anyway looks like it's moving in and out and feels like there's plenty of grease on it the bottom one feels a little stiffer although that seems okay now but uh, but I like to while I'm doing the pads I like to just grease those up anyway I've had problems with cars in the past where the pins go dry and then the calipers kind of seize up and don't work right. Okay, so I'm just looking at the top caliper pin. I'm going to try and slide this out. And I'm going to gently work the boot off of the lip on the pin and then just pull it straight out. And you should be able to see there's still a fair amount of grease on there. And if that'll focus, you can also see the lip near the head of the pin where the boot kind of comes up on and seats itself on. So next what I'm going to do is use some of the Snappa Sil Glide grease. This is specially made for uh, disc brakes and things like that. You can see on the on the tube there what it's used for, but I found this works pretty well on, on the, the disc brake caliper pins. So I'm going to take a little bit and just spread it along on the pin itself and uh, get that coated and then I'm gonna take a blob I guess maybe about the size of a pea, maybe that's a little bigger and I'm gonna work it into the boot and just get some in there just so that's nice and lubricated inside and then I'll just replace the pin work it around a little bit and then I'll work the boot back onto the pin up over that lip so that it seats back on and stays on and then I'll work this back and forth just to make sure the boot is on properly spin it around and that all looks good now it's important to make sure that the boot is seated back on that lip properly uh, if it's not then the grease can come out over time and dirt and water and other contaminants can get in and uh, your caliper pins will end up seizing okay now I will repeat the process for the bottom pin Okay, you can see here of the four clips that I'm going to use there's two different styles um, they're actually the same just mirror images from each other and the reason for that is that one set will go on the bottom and the other set will go on the top so you can see here this will sit in here kind of like that so that the round part faces out and that the wider part of the spring clip faces in towards the rotor and I think what's going to happen is that the one that's on the bottom on this side is the same one that will be on the top this is the same style of clip here this will actually be on the top on the inner um, part of the caliper so I've cleaned a lot of the loose rust and debris out of the channel here and now I'm just going to take this clip and I'm going to put it in sort of like this with the outer side kind of first then I'm going to push in the spring side and it'll sort of lock into place as it kind of goes in you'll, you'll kind of feel its seat and you can see it kind of clip over the caliper bracket and I may need to push it down the rest of the way just using a little screwdriver here 
just to make sure that it's 100% seated down there in the groove. So I'll repeat that process for the other three clips. Next, I've added some grease uh, from the packet that was supplied with the brake pads to the surfaces of each of the clips. And now, I should be ready to put the brake pads in. So, I'll do that by lining up the ears on the pads with the clips. And that may be a little easier said than done. These kind of are a little bit fussy to get in. There we go. Okay, so you can see I've got that lined up and pressed up against the rotor. And I've gotten a little bit of grease on my fingers and gotten it on the on the pad and rotor here, but I'll uh, I'll clean that up here before I finish. So now next, I'll add the inner pad, and I'll do the same thing as the outer. There, and that one's in place. That one's a little easier just because it doesn't have this bracket on the inside. So that one just clips right in place. The next thing I need to do is push the caliper piston back into the bore. So I've cleaned off all the loose dirt and rust there off of the boot and what I'm going to do now is put just a very small amount of the sill glide on the boot just to help keep it wet and to keep it from binding as I push it back in. So what I'll do next is use an old brake pad as a uh, push block and use these vice grip clamps that I have to push the piston back in. There's a flat spot on the back of the caliper on the body that I can use and that provides a good, a good spot to clamp. So then once I get this in place I'll adjust the clamps so I can push and I'll just kind of slowly apply even pressure and slowly push the piston back into the bore. I need to stop and tighten the, the clamps a little. And I want to keep an eye on the rubber boot and make sure that doesn't pinch or anything as this kind of goes back into place. And I can see on the side here I'm not sure if it's visible in the camera the current lighting, but the boot is starting to kind of buckle a little bit. And I can just kind of work that in with my fingers to make sure that doesn't pinch or bind or rip or anything like that as the piston goes back into place. You can see here I've got the caliper piston pushed back in and I've got the rubber boot um, seated back the way that it should be. There were a few air bubbles in it that were causing it to kind of bubble out and go over the lip of the piston. So I've worked those back in with my finger and now that's kind of back to where it needs to be. And uh, the next thing that I did was I put some of the sill glide grease on the pads. I could have used uh, that's still silver stuff that came with the brake pad kit, but I prefer to use the sill glide on the surface of the pads and on the back surface of the uh, of the caliper here. And I'll actually put a little bit more on the boot here. I almost forgot, so I'll do that before I put the caliper back over the pads. Pad. Okay, so next I'll seat the caliper back over the pads and line up the ears with the caliper pins and thread in caliper bolts by hand first. And then I'll put this bottom one in. 
And I'm not sure if that's visible in the camera or not. But that's in. So now that that's finger tight, I will now tighten these up with my 14 millimeter ratchet wrench. And I don't have a torque spec on these, I'm just tightening them up kind of by feel. But uh, it probably would be a good idea to torque these to the proper value. But I think it'll be fine just like this. So now I can straighten the wheel out, uh, straighten out the steering, and put the wheel back on. All right, I've straightened out the steering so that I can get the wheel and tire back on. And I've also cleaned off the rotor with some brake cleaner to remove any of the grease that I might have got on there when I greased up the clips. That'll do it for this repair. Hopefully this video was helpful. Thank you for watching.